We spoke about the role of oppositions. Let's put NGC on the spotlight here. Mm. One of the issues we still deal with that has been a concern is the economy. Um, the exchange rate, the USD versus the Leones. Uh, what's the recommendation put forward by NGC? If the NGC was the ruling government, how would you have solved this problem? The fact are that when it comes to economic issue is not a fly-by-night solution. It takes a process. And that process requires a lot of sacrifice. When you talk about inflation, is the macroeconomic data. But what influences that data? There are several activities that takes place within the economy that leads to that. And part of that has to do with the other elements of the economy, which has to do with budget deficit. That means government spending too much, more than what they are generating out of the economy. Trade deficit. That means we are not exporting enough. We are importing too much, more than that we are exporting. And debt to GDP ratio. That means government is borrowing a lot from, from, from public debt that is suppressing the economy. And most importantly, the, the lack of management of our foreign reserve, proper management of our foreign reserve. So what will the NGC do to address those concerns? This government has started one element of it, which is investing in agriculture, which will reduce our import ratio. We are spending over $200 million a year to import rice. We are consuming over 600,000 metric tons a year. 400,000 metric tons about that, of it is, is being imported. So investing in agriculture, I'm hoping that to year one, year two, by the, three years from now, that will be a cushion that will reduce our import level in that, increase the production level, which will have a positive impact on our trade ratio. The issue about inflation has to do with too much money circulating in the economy. And part of the reason has to do with the fact that government is spending too much. So a government, an NGC government, will look at fraud, waste, and abuse. By our assessment, a very stringent uh, fiscal management of the system will save us an average of 10% of our expenditure right now if you focus on fraud, waste, and abuse. What that will do, it will reduce the level of government going to the public to borrow. Treasury bills, government is borrowing money from you. Bonds, government is borrowing money from you. What does that do? It suffocates the banks. It drains the bank. If you say uh, treasury bills is about 30 to 40% now, you'll go take your money from the bank and give it to the government, right? So the bank will not have enough cash to give out to people to invest. So those are some of the economic element and another important aspect which i've written on when it came to when, it, when this ebola process came up i wrote an article about how the government can take advantage of the challenge we are facing at that moment and be able to redefine a new uh, kind of uh, economic reform of our entire system there are several several economic activities that are taking place in the country that are not being captured by the gdp they're not being captured because there is no way government is able to tax them so that some of the revenue goes to government as people make on those activities. I outline in my article what government needs to do to encourage those people to actually not only register but also be part of the banking system. But it all boils down to three things. I want you to listen to this. Three things. Fiscal responsibility is key. And that starts with budget deficit, we need to drop it down. Debt to GDP ratio, we need to it, bring it down. It's over 90% right now. According to the last statistic I read, it's about 93%. Debt to GDP ratio. When people want to deal with our economy, those are the numbers they look at. The trade deficit, we need to bring it down. That means we need to export more and import less. The challenge I have with this food, uh, feed Sierra Leone program, it's a very laudable program. 
every development economist will tell you, most agrarian economy, economies that depend on agriculture, were only able to transition into industrialization after aggressively, strategically investing in agriculture, which we had failed to do for years. Now this have taken that task up. My challenge I have is the approach. The part of it still seems to be the old ways, the traditional. Government should not be in the business of running business. That is not the job of government. Government should be in the business of creating an enabling environment for the private sector to strive so that the tax base will be broadened, the tax ratio will drop, so a lot of more businesses will pay taxes instead of the tax burden on very few. The custom duty that people pay at cost at the port authority, the high cost of bringing goods into this country is grossly reflecting on the prices that we see on the ground. What NGC will do, will waive taxes for all capital goods. If you bring machine to do agriculture, we'll waive your taxes. If you bring a bus to run transport, we'll waive your taxes. If you bring a truck, a trailer, that's, those are capital goods, we'll waive your taxes. If you bring a machine that converts coconut into coconut oil, we'll waive your taxes because those are the goods you want. But if you bring your Mercedes-Benz, we'll triple your custom duty because it's a luxury good. Those are kind of, those are, those are some of the economic policies that you need to factor in. Another important one that most government economists have failed to look at is controlling the flow of money in the economy. Now, the focus on the traditional monetary policies of the central government, much of those policies are not applicable in our economy because some of those policies are not suitable for an economy that do not have a viable and active credit market. If I want to buy a house in Sierra Leone, I will either have to cough up the money or I don't buy the house. In most other economies, if you're working in AYV, there is a room for you to go to a bank or go somewhere and get certain amount of money to buy a house and you pay little by little. That doesn't mean you're rich, but because of the credit facilities that are available, you're able to access that. Those are the issues that affect and influences the way the economy operates. So when you talk about factors that influence the interest rate, the interest rate is only relevant if it can be used into the economic activities of the country. So my approach or my recommendation will be, which will be part of the economic policy team we're put, trying to put up in the NGC, will be focusing on, is to see how we can be able to target our monetary policies such that it goes to specific sectors of the economy that we actually want to revamp. So that if you, if you make a generalized monetary policies, those people that are importing goods and services, which, have an, which has an adverse effect on the economy, are the ones that are going to gain. Because if you want to establish a factory, and the interest rate is 20 to 30 percent, a factory, you invest in it, it takes two, three, four, five years before you begin to get return on investment, you will not take that loan. But somebody importing uh, bags of tomatoes and onions or whatever, clothes and shoes, they can buy it in a few months, they turn it over and pay back to the bank. So those are the activities that hurt the economy and the ones that are supposed to be establishing factories, they don't take the loans because of the high interest rate. So monetary policy should be targeting those sectors and find a way to tailor, influence the policies, the interest rate, so that those people who want to come open factories are given a greater enabling environment so that they're able to build the private sector.